Hi, I'm Matt from Tubby Tarot. Welcome to Ten Talk. Hello, welcome back. All right, today I want to do a little video about making your own oracle deck. Now, uh, there are a lot of videos out there. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of videos out there on YouTube about how you can make your own oracle deck. And what they do is they they turn their camera down onto the desk, which I actually find very difficult, especially because I've got a weird setup here. But they turn their camera down onto the desk and they show you step by step how to make an oracle deck. I personally, as you know, we do some things diff we do things differently on on, on um, at Tubby Tarot. So I don't like doing that, and I'll tell you why. It's because it takes all the creativity away from you. It takes the power away from you, and it puts it into my hands. Okay, I'm showing you literally step by step how to do that. And let's face it, you've got to be incredibly stupid not to actually know that um, an oracle deck is simply ink and paper. Okay, um, I don't I don't want to tell you how to put an oracle there. Why don't I want to show you this is how you do it? Because there, there is no way to do it. There's no right or wrong way. You could be doing it on rune stones for all I care. You know, you could be coming up with some amazing stuff and etching it into, into pewter. You know, there is no, <laughs> there's no like one way to do it. And that's why I, I have, I don't have a problem with these videos. I think they're fantastic. But here in Tubby Terra, we do it differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you five I'm not even going to show you. I'm not even going to show you an oracle deck. There's some behind me. But I'm not going to show you an oracle deck. I'm going to give you five things that you should think about. Think about. No, you don't have to do this, but think about. And then I'm going to give you five. So five positives and then five negatives. Okay, let's go. So first positive. First thing I would say you've got to think about is theming your deck. Now let's face it. You have to have a theme. Okay. You can't just do an oracle deck for an oracle deck's um, sake. You've got to have a theme because if you have what is your theme? You, you could have like a fairy deck, which is going to be a nice soft deck with little fairies. And, or it could be like a, a real sort of like fair, dark fairy deck. Okay. So remember that the theme you choose makes the energy of the card. Okay. There's a little bonus for you. So that's the first thing. Choose a theme. Number two, decide on how many cards you're going to have in your deck. Now, some decks you buy, they've got 60 decks, 60 cards. Yes, I know, 60 cards. Some decks have got 50 cards. I have a few decks here that have got 50 cards. Or some people make it 52 cards, like a normal deck of playing cards. So think about how many cards you're going to have. Don't forget, the more cards you have, the more difficult that deck is physically to handle. Okay, especially if you're doing biggish cards. You don't want cards this size, size of my hand, and then you've got 50 of them. I mean, it's going to be a stack of cards, like the shuffling is going to be a nightmare. It's just going to be awful. So think about that. How many cards? This, the third thing you've got to think about is what I've just said. How big are you going to make these cards? If you are going to make very small cards, um, you're going to again find a problem of trying to shuffle them. So I wouldn't do an, a, an oracle deck the size of a Lenormand card. I also wouldn't do an oracle deck the size of a little playing card, a normal playing card. I would make oracle decks a bit bigger. Most oracle decks that you get are bigger than an, um, like a, a playing card deck. So decide on the size. Remember, you must always think about shuffling. How easy is it going to be to shuffle? Is this deck only going to be used by men with huge hands? Um, or are my lady, my lady readers going to um, be able to easily do it? Um, space on the table how are they going to let's say they want to do a five card or ten card spread how, do, how big a table are they going to use so think about all these things think about the size of the cards that you're going to use um, and linked to that is another little bonus tip think about the quality of paper you're going to use now the next thing what are you actually going to um what 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 is the deck? Is it one of those decks that have got lots of writing and does it come with a big thick book that you're going to write? Or is it going to have a lot of writing on the card, explaining the card? Or are you going to do a deck with just like one word? I kind of like those because it leaves a lot of space for interpretation um, and intuitive reading. But you could do a deck that's got like an explanation on the actual card. So that's something you need to think about. The other thing you need to think about is um, what word goes with what um what word would go with what card okay so if you have the word strength and then you have like a little girl with a with a balloon okay you can interpret that but to my mind that doesn't really go and there are one or two decks that i've found that have this problem the the actual image has nothing to do with the with the word 
okay? Um, in fact, some decks, I look at and I think to myself, my God, I don't even know what that is. Some decks don't have anything on the, on the card. There's no wording. So that's what you have to decide. What are you going to, how are you going to present that meaning? Are you going to present a meaning or are you just going to have a picture and make it 100% intuitive? And the final, th the final thing that you need to think about here, positive thing, is think about, <laughs> and this is like the last step, which you would think would be the first step, start thinking about the image that, you, that you're going to have on the card. Before you even put that image down, you need to think about those, those other things. What image are you going to do? How are you going to do this? Are you going to use watercolors? Are you going to use collage? Are you going to actually draw pictures yourself? Are you going to cut pictures out of magazines? Are you going to print stuff? Are you going to go online and look on, on Pinterest? What are you, how are you going to present this? What pictures are you going to present? Okay, when we say, okay, it's going to be a dark deck, there are billions of different pictures that lend themselves to a dark deck. There are billions of pictures that lend themselves to a fairy deck. Okay, so think about that. All right. And it can literally be anything. There are no hard and fast rules. Now, let's look at five things I would suggest you don't do. Number one, do not choose a theme that is going to be really, really hard to get across to people. So um, don't choose a theme that, and I know this is going to sound silly, but I've actually seen a deck like this. Don't choose a theme that has like me heavy metaphysical uh, kind of Kabbalistic um, deep, dark, sort of um, um, alchemic, uh, al alchem alchemic, <laughs> alchemical, alchemical, I don't know how to say that, but don't choose a card that alchemists would use, okay? Um, don't, don't choose something so difficult, it's, it's really, it's really super niche, okay? So that's the one thing, be careful what you, you the theme that you choose. Number two, um, don't choose something that only means something to you, okay? I'm just, I'm just giving this as an example. If you want, if it's just for you to use, that's great. But if you're going to be using it as proper readings, choose something that is going to be able to apply to many different people, all right? Uh, try and do a deck that's going to kind of suit whatever you are going to do with it, all right? So that's number two. Number three, um, try to keep your deck simple. Try to keep your artwork simple. There are decks out there that are incredibly, incredibly um, intricate and, and completely overpowering. And I find, personally, I find those decks very, very difficult to actually connect with because there is so much going on. There's this intricate, absolutely intricate design, actual a picture design. And then you've got all these explanatory words. And then you've got like a... a, a planetary sign and a sun sign and a moon what phase of the moon and it's, it's like oh my god I, I can't i can't cope there's just too much so be aware of that don't put too much on the card rather if you're going to do that make notes or write a little booklet that that kind of explains all of that sort of thing don't overwhelm your reader the next thing i want to talk about is the um the physicality of the card are you going to are you going to make it a high gloss card which is very um it's, it's, I would recommend don't do that, okay, because a lot of people um, like to read outdoors, or a lot of people actually like to read under bright lights, or as you can see, I have my windows open and my, my curtains drawn, um, and there's a lot of light, there's a lot of light in here, okay, um, I would find it very difficult in this light to read a high gloss card, I'd have to keep like doing this, and I certainly won't be able to show it to you guys on the screen, because it would have that that dot of light, okay? So think about that as well. And then the final thing that that could go wrong for you, okay, that, that you must keep in mind not to do, is don't make it a deck of cards that you are going to personally find very difficult to connect with. It's all very well while we are making this deck, um, while we're getting into it, oh God, the, the art process, the, the juices flow, the, the muse is in the room, um, you know, uh, and then we get to the end of the deck and we think, fuck, what is this? I, have, I can't connect to this. Oh my God, like, what did I just do? You know, I let my creativity go like completely left when it should have gone right. So just don't do that. All right. Make sure that it is a deck that you can personally connect with. I've run a bit over time, but there's five things you should take into consideration as positives and five things you can take into consideration as things you probably should not do. Okay. I'm Matt from Tubby Terror and I will see you next week for some more 10 Talk. Bye.